Today's spoiler video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Use the link below to pre-order your cards today. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another daily dose of Corset 2019 spoilers. And actually, today is technically our last daily dose of Corset 2019 spoilers. We got the full spoiler release this morning, which means we only have a handful of new cards to talk about. We got one insane mythic, a handful of rares, some lower rarity stuff. However, this daily spoiler season is a little bit different. We're still going to have two more catch-up videos for the cards we missed earlier in the week. So we talked about the Mythics yesterday night. So coming up over the next few days, we'll have a rare video and also a reprint video just to kind of catch some of the sweet stuff that we missed. But for today, our goal is pretty simple. We're going to look over the rest of the new rares and Mythics that came out since yesterday, talk a little bit about the lower rarity stuff, and then remind you that you can check out the full Corset 2019 spoiler over on the MTG Goldfish site. I will link it down below. So anyway, let's jump right into it and talk about not only the most exciting card from our last day of Corset 2019 spoilers, but maybe the most exciting card in the entire Corset 2019 set. And that is our new Planeswalker, Tezzeret Artifice Master. And this card seems absolutely insane to me. So five mana, five loyalty starting out. Plus one, you make a Thopter with flying, which is already a great ability. Zero, you draw a card. But if you have Metalcraft, three or more artifacts, you draw two cards instead. And then negative nine, you get to tutor your library every single end step with an emblem for a permanent card. Put it on the battlefield and shuffle your library. So I think Tezzeret Artifice Master is probably the best planes Walker from Corset 2019 and is an extremely strong card. Before we kind of delve into what you do with the card, just looking at this card, it does basically everything you want from a Planeswalker. While five mana is a lot, five loyalty going immediately up to six loyalty is a nice chunk of loyalty for its mana cost. The plus one ability allows you to protect Tezzeret. You can block any one creature with that Thopter to keep Tezzeret high on loyalty. The zero ability, though, is probably the most broken ability on Tezzeret. Tezzeret. Zero to draw a card, but more than likely, if you're playing an artifact based deck, draw two cards is just incredibly powerful. That is so much card advantage. It reminds me a little bit of Jace the Mind Sculptor's brainstorm ability. How just sitting there and every single turn, brainstorming, brainstorming, brainstorming is so oppressive and puts the game away. With Tezzeret, it's going to be the same way. If you can protect this and have multiple artifacts on the battlefield, drawing two cards a turn is going to put the game away on its own. And I think that's the ability that will be used most. Sure, the Thopter's fine if you need to block. The zero ability is the one that just seals the game with this massive influx of card advantage. And then the negative nine is just kind of a bonus. Like, if you get in the position, much like Jason Mind Sculptor, where you feel like, all right, I'm going to use this to win the game, and I'm already far enough ahead that I can win the game. Instead of zeroing, 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 you start plussing, 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 and then you just start tutoring out your best thing every single turn, and that should close out the game in very short order. So the reason I'm so excited for for Tezzeret, apart from the card just being powerful on its face, is we have a ton of support in Standard right now. Curving Karn Cyan of Urza into Tezzeret Artifice Master seems absolutely insane. They work so incredibly well together. Karn coming down, generating card advantage, making artifacts, followed by Tezzeret making artifacts, generating card advantage, seems like an insanely powerful curve, and that's not even to mention Tezzeret the Schemer, so we kind of have the potential, at least for the next three months, until Tezzeret the Schemer rotates to play like a weird artifacty blue black super friends list with all of these cards making their presence felt plus we got a ton of good artifacts still in the format heart of kieran insanely powerful treasure map sticking through rotation we have a bunch of constructs like chief of the foundry so i feel like tezzeret has a ton of potential to be a very very strong card in standard and we already have a solid home it wasn't that long ago we were playing construct tribal in standard a deck that is over flowing with artifacts and Tezzeret is just a natural fit on the top end, maybe in place of the Antiquities War to go along with Karn Cyan of Urza to just allow the game to go incredibly long. Like, you're drawing so many cards if you have Karn and Tezzeret, plus you have all these powerful artifact creatures and Walking Blisses and Chief of the Foundries, so I'm super excited for the potential of Tezzeret, Artifice, Master, and Standard. This is my pick for the best Planeswalker from the set, and I would not be surprised to see it being one of the best cards from the set, period. I don't know about seeing Modern Planeswalker, 
play, but as far as standard is concerned, the plethora of good artifacts, the fact it curves so well in the card, and just the card's obvious power, protecting itself, drawing cards, winning the game with the ultimate, basically means it does everything that you want a Planeswalker to do. So, super duper excited for Tezzeret Artifest Master. If I'm not playing Jank, I plan on curving tons of cards into Tezzerets over the next 15 months of Standard. Next on our list, we have one of the saddest spoilers from Corset 2019, and that is Sun Cleanser. So, Sun Cleanser, 2 mana, 1-4. When it enters the battlefield, you get to either remove all the counters from a target creature, and that creature can't get counters anymore as long as you got Sun Cleanser, or you remove counters from a target opponent and that player can't get counters for as long as Sun Cleanser is on the battlefield. So this is a super sweet card. The problem is, it's about 8 months too late. If this was a card that was printed instead of Solemnity, it's very possible that we wouldn't have had Rogue Refiner banned. We wouldn't have had a Tune with Ether banned. Because this is great energy hate. If you look at the community's feedback to Solemnity, the two things they said is it needs to be 2 mana instead of 3. 3 mana is too slow. And it needs to remove counters counters, not just keep players from getting counters. Sun Cleanser does all of those things. It's even on a 1-4 body, so you can't kill it with Harness Lightning very easily, or a Braid, the primary removal spell from the Energy decks. So I really feel like Wizards nailed it with the Energy Hate card. Unfortunately, they nailed it after Energy has already been banned multiple times, and is just no longer really part of a format, which means, for right now, I'm not really sure what you do with Sun Cleanser in Standard. I guess it kills Walking Ballista, you get all the counters off of it, that's fine. It's a reasonably good blocker. You can move counters off a of Jade Light Ranger or Verderous Gear Hulk counters, but I don't think there's enough now that energy has been banned to really make me want to play Sun Cleanser in my deck. However, there is one thing I did want to mention. While I'm not super excited for Sun Cleanser in Standard or Modern at the moment, although I do think it's a good safety valve, I'm glad that it's floating around just in case there's a time when it's going to be important. I did want to mention it in Commander, where if your playgroup is playing Marin, or Azuri, which are two of the like 15 or 20 most popular commanders to build around, Sun Cleanser is a pretty sweet option to take care of the experience counters and really power down these commanders. So if you are continually getting wrecked by these commanders, keep Sun Cleanser in mind as a potential gotcha card to deal with your friend that's marining you or Azuriing you. So overall, Sun Cleanser would have been insane a year ago. As it sits right now, I'm glad it exists as a safety valve. Maybe energy catch is on in modern. Maybe we have another counters mechanic coming up in Guilds of Ravnica block or something in standard. So I'm glad it's floating around, but its primary target, the Energy Menace, has already been dealt with through banning, so it's much less exciting today than it would have been a year ago in, during Amicat block or something like that. Otherwise, we got a couple more rares to talk about. Transmagorifying Wand is a super fun flavor card. So three mana artifact, enters with three charge counters, you pay one, tap it, remove a charge charge counter, you destroy a creature, the creature's controller makes a 2-4 white ox creature token, only do it as a sorcery. Unfortunately, I don't think this card is actually good for standard. While killing something is great, the fact that you're giving your opponent a 2-4 means you're not really killing it, it's kind of like a repeatable colorless pongify type effect, so I'm not really sure there's a way to take advantage of it. Maybe you could do some jank with like undying effects or something like that where you're killing it and getting back your strangle root guys and going all crazy with your oxen and stuff. I think for the most part though, it's just a really cool flavor card. I'm happy cards like this are printed, but don't expect it should show up in tournament play. It is fun for commander where people are playing powerful creatures. You got four players to deal with stuff and being able to downgrade a Titan or a massive dinosaur or an Eldrazi or something into a 2-4. The 2-4 isn't much of a trouble in a format where you start with 40 life. So keep it in mind is a sweet commander option. As far as standard, or definitely modern, it's just a little slow in turning Scrap Heap Scroungers and Bomb at Couriers into 2 fours. You're not actually coming out very far ahead in that exchange when you consider all the mana you're dumping into it. So, sweet card, awesome in commander, probably not good anyplace else. Otherwise, Palaka Worm, I love this card. It's a little weird to see it at rare, since it's always been an uncommon, all the way back to Rise of the Eldrazi. But for 7 mana, you get a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample, also gain you 
seven life when it enters the battlefield. When it dies, you get to draw a card. It's actually a very powerful card, especially in Limited, where it's a staple. So like I said, it wasn't uncommon all the way back to Rise of the Eldrazi, upgraded to Rare. As far as Standard is concerned, it probably sounds crazy, but I think there's a chance Palaka Worm sees play. Sifter Worm is a card that we've played before, and I'm sure we will play again, because the big stabilizing body and the life gain is nice. You're losing out on the scry, but you're gaining the card draw when it dies, and that doesn't even consider the Panharmonicon implications. Palaka Worm is just an insane card with Panharmonicon coming down, gaining you a massive 14 life, which is going to make it so hard for your opponent to kill you. So I'm actually really excited for Palaka Worm returning. We got good rampant standard it's possible to cast it little weird to see it at rare but it does make sense from a limited perspective because it is an ultra bomb in limited so having it a little less common might be a good thing as far as course at 2019 limited is concerned finally we got a bunch of lower rarity stuff not going to talk about it super in depth but i did want to mention a few cards so blanchwood armor is a sweet pump spell enchantment if you want to stick it on your carnage tyrant and play like mono green boggles or other hexproof creatures could be a fun option Ruptured Spire, worth keeping in mind, it is not a good land. It is very inefficient, having to enter the battlefield tapped, essentially enter double tap, because you have to pay one when it enters the battlefield, so you can't just, like, play it tapped on turn one. But after you get on the battlefield, it does just add mana of any color. So if you're looking to build five-color Super Friends, for example, or another five-color deck in Standard, especially on a budget, this does offer some really sweet mana-fixing possibilities, even though it's not the most efficient card, especially when you consider we have, like, Inventor's Fair in the format, Ether Hub in the format. We have a critical mass of five color land, so maybe before some of those cards start rotating, we'll be able to play some sweet five color budget decks in standard. Psychic Corrosion looks like one of my favorite cards. Kind of a downgraded version, but it's very similar to Sphinx's Tutelage. In Modern or Commander, you can now have eight copies of Sphinx's Tutelage. Of course, you lose out on the ability to double hit if you mill cards of the same color. You also lose out on the mill ability, which isn't a huge deal, but is sometimes relevant with Sphinx's Tutelage. But this makes me excited to maybe try some sort of Turbo Fog deck again. We've definitely played Sphinx's Tutelage Turbo Fog in the past. You just fog everything, play your Psychic Corrosion, or Sphinx's Tutelage in this case. And since you're already drawing tons of cards with your Turbo Fog deck to keep your fogs in hand, you just slowly mill your opponent out as you're fogging them. So expect that to be coming soon on Budget Magic. I love Turbo Fog. I love Sphinx's Tutelage. And Psychic Corrosion is close enough that I imagine we will be playing it before too long. Other Otherwise, we have our Panharmonicon list. Cards that work with Panharmonicon. Salvager of Secrets, sweet for getting instants or sorceries back from your graveyard. If you double with Panharmonicon, you're getting two. Always worth mentioning card draw creatures because they're so good with Panharmonicon. Rock's Oracle is a pretty sweet one. Two toughness, a little bit troubling, but it does curve well with Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon on four, Rock's Oracle on five, draw two cards. Aviation Pioneer is a reasonable card on its own. A one-two that comes along with a one-one for three mana. Already pretty sweet, makes artifacts so it works with like Tezzerats and Karns and so forth. Plus, you could double it up with Panharmonicon if you want to. And those are kind of all the lower rarity stuff I wanted to mention. And that brings us to the end of our daily spoilers for today. So we didn't have a ton to talk about because it's the last day we got the full set. Again, make sure to check out the full set spoiler. Link below down in the website. So we'll cover the rest of the stuff that we missed over the next couple of days. A rare video, a reprint video. So keep it out for those as well. Anyway, what do you think of these cards? How how busted is Tezzeret Artifice Master? I think this card is one of the best in the set, but I want to know what you think. Is it going to be a standard staple? Does it have potential in older formats at all? Is there anything we could do with Sun Cleanser now that energy has been basically banned out of existence, or is it just a case where it's a little too late thanks to the bannings? How about Transmogorifying Wand? What do you want to turn into an Oxen? How about Palaka Worm? Is that a fine rare? How good will it be in standard? The lower rarity stuff. Can we build five colored decks with Ruptured Spire? Can we mill people out with Psychic Corrosion? probably better known as Sphinx's tutelage. How about Blanchwood Armor pumping hexproof creatures? Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, again, one last reminder, check out the full spoiler. It's sortable. It's super cool. I'll link it down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.